people visit Plymouth Notch uh, in Vermont, they sometimes, when they're walking through the historic site, and you know he was born in this particular building in the back of the general store, which was a birthplace, and then right across the street is the homestead where he grew up, and just down the road is where he was buried. Some people erroneously think that all these buildings were brought to a central location to make it uh, good for a tour, so to speak, and not realizing that, no, that's really the way it was. And so you had to make sure you always had your reserves, so to speak, and, and plan ahead and be prepared. And it takes extra energy to do just about anything. Um, and you got to make sure that you've got sufficient wood and, and supplies and, and all that because there's storms where you can't get out for a few days. And it was a simple, simple boy life. And he thought that that would carry him through, through his whole entire life. Maybe it was tough, but I once heard that Calvin could get more syrup out of maple tree than anyone else. So he was known to be very good at helping along with the farmers and the farming and collecting the whey and milking the cows. And um, it was just a way of life for him. And his mother was Victoria Josephine Moore. And, uh, and his father was called Colonel John. He wasn't an actual colonel, but he was um, given the honorary title of Colonel, um, Colonel John Coolidge. And he had one sister named Abigail. His sister was uh, an amazing teacher, even though she was a very young person. She was a teenager. She was 13 or 14, and she was teaching school. Um, at the schoolhouse. The death of his, um, his mother and the death of his sister were probably um, difficult for him to bear. When Calvin was growing up, we would accompany his father sometimes on his efforts to go around and, and collect uh, taxes. And that's where Calvin was able to see firsthand that people have to pay the taxes. They don't just come out of thin air and it can be a burden on, on a number of families, uh, especially as taxes go up, they get to create a burden, and so they have left less left uh, for themselves to do things with. And so I think at a young age, that was something that uh, put a mark in Calvin's approach to size of government on society that it takes to keep the government running. And so therefore, government ought to be very efficient and, and uh, careful with uh, money that's certainly not theirs. It goes back to the people and that the more the, the people can work for themselves and do things on their own, so much the better versus the government being uh, getting larger and having more overhead and being less efficient. Grace Goodhue was in Northampton, Massachusetts at the Clark School for the Deaf. She was a teacher and she uh, taught children um, how to um, lip read. Uh, she wasn't, she didn't, the school did not believe in sign language, um, so they believed in lip reading at the time. Calvin Coolidge was um, in Northampton, and he had rented a, a, a townhouse um, and was upstairs shaving with a bolo hat on, and um, you know, and he had a little piece of hair that was hanging down his uh, in his forehead. And Grace Goodhue um, saw him she, in the in the window, and she found that pretty pretty funny and pretty endearing, and so. There's, there's word that somebody exchanged, he, either he gave her, her car, his card or uh, she made the atten her attention to him and uh, they began to, to date. Grace was the total opposite of Calvin. Um, she was vivacious, she loved everyone, she was um, funny, she was beautiful and she was the one person who could bring Calvin out of his shell. Grace also knew when Calvin was very shy and not wanting to communicate with people, she would be the communicator. Uh, and she would uh, discuss you know, things with people at the White House. She would have the social parties. 
and um, she would did a, a lot in her own right um, as First Lady. Everything I've read about Grace is extremely fascinating. Her vivaciousness, her love for people and animals and and um, the Red Sox, and I think uh, Grace and I would have hit it off. <laughs> I think Calvin was introspectively faithful. He um, would he would come to actually this church um, with his parents, and he would uh, attend services and go to Sunday school. I, he would not. Uh, preach aloud to people, um, but he was very introspective and he would, um, I think, think, keep his thoughts to himself. Um, while Grace, on the other hand, as she was growing up um, was and was in Burlington, at first she was um, uh, going to a Methodist church um, with friends of hers and then um, changed over to a congregational church. I think part of it is, is that I, I think that is true of Plymouth partly because of its uh, environment and that uh, those that if you had a disagreement with someone you'd still have to see them as a you know, very small community so it wasn't as though you could just avoid them and and there was enough other people that you could just choose who you're going to interact with. It came across with people as they got to know him that he, he, he could be trusted. Uh, so I think that helped him you know, gain the trust of people that when he said he was going to do something, it would actually get done. Um, and uh, kind of the, the adage of under-promising and over-delivering. When you boil it down to if you had to pick a single characteristic, I think I would, I would say is most important uh, was character itself in terms of good, strong, moral character uh, that is kind of the underpinning, in my mind, of a lot of the other traits that he had, but it all comes back to how he grew up and the, the character and the moral fiber that he had that I think was somewhat unique for that time, and certainly in today's world, uh, we could use a, a lot more of, of that. Thank <laughs> you.